Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It is the fourth Sunday in Lent. It's a special Sunday, as you will find out in the sermon. We welcome everyone who's joining us online and Facebook. We know that you are there because we count you. So welcome. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to greet him trembling and said, Do you come peacefully? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look upon his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look upon the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the, the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. 
he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Let's say Psalm 23 together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither his, this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus opened his eyes. There was a division among the Pharisees. They questioned the man a second time. He told them that, that the man who opened his eyes was a prophet. But they called him a sinner and accused the man who was blind of being his disciple. Then he revi they reviled him, saying, you are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now you say, We see. Your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, Amen. Please be seated. 
A very good morning to you on this fourth Sunday in our Lenten season. We have much to discuss. Our Sunday today is a celebration just in the middle of Lent. It's a celebration, Rose or Laetare Sunday, and it's sometimes called Rejoicing Sunday. Yes, rejoicing. We have a magnificent gospel told by John in which a man thought blind in every way, probably was, and also in faith, was completely transformed, healed, through his conversation and finally faith in Jesus Christ. So let's take Rose Sunday first. In some places, we mark the day with a change from purple to rose. Somebody already told me they're wearing pink today for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) If we call the day Laetare Sunday, it's because we're remembering a term from the short sentence that introduces a Eucharistic prayer in prayer A. We'll turn to prayer A next Sunday. If I read you the prayer, you'll recognize the words. It is a right and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty Father, creator of heaven and earth. Rejoice, it says. Take delight in God's presence. Take a break from this Lenten season of penitence and fasting, if you are doing that, and recognize joy, a special kind of joy. Why? Because God, in the incarnate Jesus Christ, sustains us, Jesus, we remember in our liturgies in a few short weeks, sustains us through his suffering, death, and eventual resurrection. Enlivens us because we know that we are forgiven through this action once and for all. Our trespasses are canceled. As human beings, through that action, We're reconciled to God. So, if we make mistakes in this secular life, we simply need to return to God and fervently ask forgiveness and then do our very best to stay close to God again. That's the main point of this Rose Laetari Sunday. You know, the gift of Christian joy remains with us always. Always, even when we're suffering. Even when everything else seems challenging and troubling in the world. It rests somewhere deep. Somewhere very, very deep in the soul. And causes us to see the beauty of Jesus, the Christ, in the words of scripture, and experience that beauty through the Holy Spirit in the world, no matter what, no matter what. How do we know this? Because we've seen it before, but sometimes it takes a while for this joy, this deep faith to come. We have a good example this morning, don't we? In the beautiful reading, Father Wayne read, Jesus came to heal this man, thought to be born blind, who had been living in darkness for years and years. And yet, if you take a look at that story again, he was very perceptive, wasn't he? He was very, very 
clever. He was clever enough to expose those learned Pharisees and to critique their plan to trounce Jesus. Read it again. You'll see. In the story, first Jesus comes along and calls out his disciples to do the works of God in the day and the light. But he acknowledges that night is coming when no one can work. At the same time, he assures his disciples and us with these words, so long as I am in the world, for us now in the presence of the Holy Spirit, I am and I will remain the light of the world. And then he set set about the work of healing. He used that mud and mixed it with saliva, which is said in ancient times you have medicinal properties as an implement of healing and quickly he brought about a new creation unfolding from the mud a man healed and transformed a man who could see of course the detractors the Pharisees disputed the blind man's story and disapproved of healing work with mud on the Sabbath and began to question and engage in multiple dialogues, if you know, first with the parents, and then is this man who he says he is, who is he, who's a prophet, blah, blah, blah. The Pharisees questioned again on the advice of his parents. How did he open your eyes? And the man explained, never in the history of the world has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Jesus found the man and in a final conversation revealed himself as the son of man, as you just heard. The one speaking to you is he, he said. And the man said those words, I believe. I believe what you said, Jesus I'm transformed, and the joy in Jesus is complete. We could all agree that these are complicated times. We don't know the answers. We don't know the cures. We don't know the choices. Things are not clear. Sometimes they're mysterious and dark. And sometimes we may feel that we are moving blindly ahead blindly ahead. But we know that God and Jesus protects us and supports us always. That's the joy. That's the joy we can be sure about on Laetare Sunday. So let's travel these last weeks of Lent going deeper and deeper in the joy of faith. Let's winnow out the last bits the last actions, the last wrong choices that keep us away from God, that keep us in the joy of our whole souls and whole hearts, and keep us from being open to the new thing that God is doing. Maybe take another look at scripture we haven't read in a long time. Pray mightily from home. Look, use eyes to see moments of grace as they come before you, and they will come. They will come. My personal experience is that about now, my chosen practice for Lent, be it reading, studying, or abstaining, needs to be reheated and reimagined, I'm asking myself if the practice I have chosen has the effect, is showing me more about God's reconciling love or not. Or if my reading, listening, and studying are a bit stale and rote. I don't know. I don't know. 
But what I do know, that I can try again in these last weeks as we approach Jesus' death and resurrection. Some of you may know, I don't see Louise, but I'm sure she's somewhere. She probably knows it. The serum prayer that dates from 1527, or maybe much earlier, and is associated with a region in England called Serum, which is present day Salisbury. And it focuses on the God that we want to know. If you know it, say it along with me. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. Amen. Let us stand and tell the story of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and revel in your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray especially for the people in Ukraine and for your peace to prevail throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of, Af- of Southern Africa. In our diocese, we pray for the clergy and people of St. John's, Fallbrook. I ask your prayers for Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, Susan, our priest, and for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the people of this congregation who minister in Christ's name. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Let us pray for healing from the pandemic and racial injustice. Guide our civil discourse, O God. Alert us to social evils and show our nation how to end the patterns of racism. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body and mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Let us pray for an end to the pandemic of the coronavirus. Comfort those afflicted with COVID-19 and uphold our medical workers. Give us a sense of responsibility for one another. May all people receive the vaccine here and throughout the world. We also pray for those who, through addiction, have lost their health and freedom, for those who suffer as a result of another's addiction, for those who minister to and care for them, and for an end to the opioid epidemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died and that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray for that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of God be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself for us, a perfect offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By you were created and after being. From the primal element, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return through prophets and sages. You revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son. Born of a woman to fulfill your law, to be open for us the way of freedom and and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we remember his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Leah and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be us, 
Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we will pray. Ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, our Creator, who does not despise the broken spirit, give to us a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for a few brief announcements. Birthdays and anniversaries, too. Birthdays and anniversaries first. Any? Just remember you can stand in for your children or other people who are having birthdays and aren't here. So if there's anyone who wants to uh, stand in, are we having a stand in? Is that you, Jeff? Okay. okay. <coughs> No. All right. <laughs> you see any other standing? No birthdays, no anniversaries. All right, that's fine. Um, then, um, in case we have any in IT land, we're going to say the prayer. Anyway, watch over your children, O oh Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace which passes understanding all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I urge you to read about Holy Week and Palm Sunday because it's going to be wonderful, isn't it, John? We have thought about this for a long time and consulted many people, and we hope that you will come to every single service because, you know, there's no resurrection without the death on the cross. And we know that in our lives over and over again. But at this time of the year, in something called the Triduum, we get to celebrate it in liturgy and drama and music. And so we hope that you will join us on those days and read about it in the bulletin.